All right then, hi everyone. Let's just get on with the last session of this chapter. And this is going to be super easy because most of the difficult topics have already been covered in the last two sessions. So being done with those previous topics, we'll be moving forward to the rest of the topics that are given in this session. We have the easiest ones, water for all, construction of dams, pollution of river water and Ganga action plan, which is actually a little important. Watershed management. Watershed management is basically concerned with the water harvesting, right? So we have already covered this particular topic in the first session, uh, in the first recording of, of this chapter. So I hope you have already learned, okay? And next is the coal management, petroleum and uh, petroleum management, acid drain and its harmful effect and bioplastics, out of which bioplastics are a little more important. And acid drain usually comes in like one mark question so it's up to you right now moving forward with the water for all all the living organisms require water 70 percent of our bodies water two third like three fourths of earth surface is water only 2.5 percent of fresh water is present on the earth which i have already told you in the previous sessions like the first session of this chapter Basically, all the oxygen dependent organisms, all the oxygen dependent as well as the non oxygen dependent organisms, they require water for the sake of the energy uh, production. Okay. For the ATP production, ATP is adenosine triphosphate. I know uh, that you have been studying of all of these in the previous session as well, but we just could do a quick good uh, revision. Okay. Now, all the oxygen dependent organisms, they require water for the sake of the respiration because they produce ATP with the help of the process of the glycolysis and Krab cycle etc etc right and they do it all of it in the mitochondria and the cytoplasm of the cell i hope you're well versed with all of these terms because all of these you have already studied in the ninth standard chapter cell the fundamental unit of life all right now see we have different breathing mechanisms for different uh, organisms. For example, earthworm breathing through skin, us breathing through the lungs, fishes breathing through gills, right? And on top of that, we require water as well as to uh, break down the food molecules or to generate energy, which we've already talked about. And water is very much important for the photosynthesis as well. No water, no oxygen through photosynthesis. Keep that in mind, sir. Moving forward, constructions of the dams. See, dams basically are built so that we can avail all the different type of, you know, uh, all the different type of uses or benefits which are given to us by the water, right? For example, uh, we have the irrigation aiding. We have the uh, water supply to different semi-arid and arid regions. We can also produce the electricity, right? We can use to um, use. We can use the water flow to run the turbines rotate the turbines and produce the electricity and there are like multiple multiple things that we could be you know using with the help of the constructions of dams water reservoir fishing generating of hydroelectric electric power human consumption irrigating etc etc the literal con uh, construction of dams is not going to come into the exam but a few examples of the benefits can occur okay now, the next is the pollution of river water and the Ganga Action Plan. Now, this Ganga Action Plan is important because it was initiated by the government of India as the Ganga is an Indian river. So, we'll have to dig in a little deeper for that one. But before uh, we step in that one, we just going to have to go ahead with the pollution of the river water. You do realize that there are different industries which are situated on the banks of different rivers and they kind of just, you know, focus on uh, releasing all their waste product and all the waste material into the rivers instead of treating it first and that leads to the harm uh, to the different type of flora and fauna which are found in the river right different type of fishes they die the chemicals which are released into the water they also go to the you know longer distances and they also uh, contaminate the soil at the banks and all the all the flora as in the different plants they die the microorganisms they die ultimately everything is thrown off the balance once all of that starts happening right similarly the different type of diseases are released you know because of the domestic sewage 
toxic uh, toxic industrial and chemical wastes and different type of things which are released into the water apart from whatever the rubbish and debris uh, people just throw into it you know the solid ones such as the plastics or plastic bottles or cans of uh, beer or cold drinks etc etc apart from that you know we have one example how the rehabilitation of sh or soft shell turtles for uh, popul uh, for the pollution abatement is going on recently if i recall properly mumbai beaches were cleared okay mumbai beaches were cleared and it's not about the river water it's about the ocean water as well the ocean water is being acidified because of all the chemicals which are released different wildlife is going extinct because of the pollution right and the toxic materials which are being mixed into the water because of all the development which is going on but there are some people who uh, are you know kind enough to uh let's see contribute towards the wildlife as well for example the mumbai beaches were cleared recently with the uh, with this particular organization and an individual i forgot the name of and that kind of helped in returning a lot of turtles from the sea after so many years and you know laying of eggs there and it was quite nice so you know people doing good things for rehabilitation for the change can lead to the better things as well and i think we are well educated and aware enough to do such things and to persuade others to do such things as well right now that being said we're going to watch a super cool video about the gang action plan and then we'll be moving forward with the session all right here we are ganga water pollution the rivers in india play a great role for indians there are several rivers in india such as ganga satluj yamuna brahmaputra krishna kaveri etc ganga rises in the western himalayas in the indian state of uttarakhand it has several advantages as follows irrigation power generation industrial development fisheries navigation construction of dams on ganga do you see the basic structure of the dam here how we have a reservoir how we generate the electricity by rotating the turbines how we supply it to the households which are nearby how we use it for the irrigation purposes right etc etc moving forward nowadays ganga is one of the 10 most endangered rivers in the world how is it polluted one discharge of industrial waste such as harmful chemicals into the river two discharge of food waste garbage and flowers two run of solids from medical waste and agricultural waste four discharge of pollutin bags into water five washing clothing bathing in river six disposal of animal carcasses seven animal wallowing eight mixing of ashes of dead persons in the river how to control one interception and diversion of sewage two sewage treatment plant three low cost sanitation four river front development five public participation and awareness government has started ganga action plan to protect ganga river from this dangerous pollution right so you see government which started the ganga action plan if we talk more about it it was basically started by um late rajiv gandhi and uh, it was started in 1986 i i guess it was um january 14 so january 14 1986 the ganga action plan was launched and the main aim of this plan uh, this ganga action plan was to save and protect the river ganga from further pollution and from mixing of the industrial wastes and you know so this is also called as the gap the ganga action plan and the most important thing is that you need to know about what is the aim you need to know about 
the different type of measures which could be taken in the video. We did talk about the different measures such as the developing the front of the river, you know, so that we have more and more visitors. We can uh, spread the awareness between the people and there should be a public participation program. On top of that, we can have the sewage water treatment plant and we can have the sewage uh, interception or we can have the sewage directed to somewhere else, right? So different measures could be taken. Moving next to the watershed management. Watershed management again is, you know, studying about how exactly is water distributed over the different topographies of the world, different areas of the world, and how can we use it? How can we harvest it? How can we implement these, this particular resource at hand for the sake of, you know, developing uh, of our country of our, or of the people at a further uh, better rate, right? So there are different things. And on top of that, we have different programs and projects run to that which are not as important for the exam point of view but just know that watershed management is related to the uh, studying of the distribution of resources related to the water and how can we harvest the water how can we implement those particular resources for the good of the people okay or good of the animal or the human communities or plant etc right now that being said we did already talk about the different watershed management programs, such as the traditional ways of uh, saving the water, harvesting the water, or uh, modern ways of harvesting harvesting the water. Remember the khadis, khadans and the tankas, and then we had the ferro cement tanks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That has already been already been discussed in the uh, first session of this chapter. Next is the coal management. Now, see, coal is. Uh, is the black gold that people talk about. Why? Because it has the most significant use and it has been significantly using since the ancient times. So we have uh, the power generation because using the coal we can you know boil the water, use that steam to run the turbines and then producing the electricity and on top of that it is used in the steel production, cement production as uh, you know a fuel basically. So this is the major fuel that has been there and most of the coal uh, in India is found in the region Jharkhand, right? So that is one thing. But on top of that, using coal again is sort of a drag. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a bite back thingy. Why? Because using the coal is going to release so much of carbon dioxide that it ultimately goes ahead and um, contributes to the pollution, to the greenhouse effect, to the global warming you know, different gases such as the sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, they also contribute to the acid rain, which again is a very harmful thing and it erodes most of the things. It leads to the different type of skin diseases, cancers, etc., etc. And after that, we have the petroleum management. Petroleum management is one of the same thing as the coal management. So uh, this basically is also used as the fuel and certain things of the, out of the petroleum are extracted. We extract the Vaseline, we extract the jellies, we extract the kerosene, petrol, diesel, etc., natural gas, etc., etc. And different things are, you know, generated and used with the help of it uh, so you go on long drives because of you know petroleum thanks to the millions of dinosaurs that died and over the time their bodies made the petrol for you so that being said we have the acid rain now listen to this acid rain is uh, let's say it is caused by the different chemical reactions which occur into the environment itself. And as I previously mentioned, acid rain basically goes on ahead with the, uh, what do we call it? Uh, the different type of nitrogen oxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, etc., etc., which are released because of the production of uh, different gases when we are using the fossil fuels, right? Now, see the sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, etc., 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 which has already been mentioned here as well. Now, effect of acid rain, it causes the respiratory issues. It kind of, you know, flows into the rivers and ponds and affects the aquatic system. It, it basically is a large, large, uh, let's say, um, harmful thing it's it's a vast harm vastly harmful thing that is there it is eroding everything it is kind of causing the diseases skin diseases it is causing the respiratory issues it is uh, causing the acidification of the rivers and the water bodies it is falling in right and it is uh, depleting the soil quality it is depleting the fertility it is destroying the crops which are there in the fields so nothing good comes out of it basically right that is what acid rain and different harmful effects for the 
the acid rain are. Next, we have the last topic of the session and the chapter. We have the bioplastic. Bioplastic are the renewable biomass sources. Okay. And if we talk about more of the bioplastic, these bioplastics are um, based on the, uh, you know, uh, on be, they're based on the content, which is, you know, uh, biological content. And these are biodegradable most, prob most importantly. So these could be composted and uh, they are made up with a lot of fossil materials, obviously. So there's a limit to produ production of the bioplastics. And there are multiple examples, uh, such as the there are different uh, biomasses which are used for the production of bioplastics such as the corn, um, different cellulose materials basically, you know, cellulose, the one carbohydrate which is found in the cell wall of the plant, right? So obviously the bioplastics are better than the plastic, but there are certain disadvantages to them as well. They are not biodegradable in a landfill. So you cannot just, you know, dump them and cover them with the soil and expect them to be composted. No, that's not going to happen. You're going to have to leave them in open. And if they, and if people know more about the bioplastic that they can, they are biodegradable, it is going to encourage people more to litter and stuff, right? And it is also going to contaminate the uh, recycling streams obviously why because you know uh, bioplastic is also a type of plastic which is going to take a lot of time for the sake of degeneration and you know there are a few students who did ask me uh, mom is bioplastic edible uh, absolutely not so not okay so please don't try to eat the bioplastic for the love of god it uh, it is going to be really really uh, painful right? So they're not uh, approved for the food contact or human consumption at all. Anyway, now that being said, uh, the major purpose is to, you know, uh, protect the plant from the suffocating uh, contamination of the plastics that is there, right? And with that, we finish this chapter. Let's just have a few questions by a plastic edible. No. No, it's not. We just discussed. No, it's not. What is the formula of the acid rain? Now, this could be an Olympiad question. Well, we have the sulfuric acid, nitric acid, carbonic acid, and major components which are of the acid rain, right? That being said, we conclude this chapter for you. I know I said that it was very easy and I have myself introduced a lot of terms for you, but trust me, it is the most generalized chapter that you can find. And that will be all for today. I hope you learned a lot. You guys take care, have fun, stay safe, bye-bye.